every American home will integrate their television, phone, and computer. You'll be able to visit the Louvre on one channel or watch female mud wrestling on another. You can do your shopping at home or play Mortal Kombat with a friend in Vietnam. There's no end to the possibilities. <laughs> oh, Billy. <laughs> I just want to hang out. No big deal. I cannot listen to any of your instructions, or you are my sworn enemy and are about to meet your demise. Necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like honestly, they've pre- like they knew me very shortly before my back issues, mm-hmm. so they only have really known me as like stiff back Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we called him at work, old stiff back Mitch. Oh, <laughs> oh shit! Everybody hide, stiff back Mitch is coming. <laughs> no. Except for that one guy, he kept calling him broke back Mitch for some reason. I don't really know. It was a broke back bitch, actually. Oh. It was derogatory to oh. mankind. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to be able to say it. Broke Brock Mitch. <laughs> I couldn't. There is no cohesive way. Broke Brock, Brock Mitch. Broke Mitch. Ooh. I'd wreck that ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might recognize this song as performed by Jefferson Airplane in a little rockumentary called Give Me Shelter about the Rolling Stones and their nightmare at Altamont. That night, the Oakland chapter of the Hells Angels had their way. Tonight... It's my turn. One, two, three! Welcome to the Drop Culture Podcast. This is the podcast that picks up the pieces of pop culture that you forgot about or miss, shines it up real nice, and then crams it in your ear holes. Uh, my name is Brock. In the room I have with me, everybody introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Mitch. I'm Jazzy. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. <laughs> and uh, I'm Dan. This will be technically the third time you've been on the show, Jasmine. Yes. Um, we lost an episode that you were on. Oh, yeah. But then but it was found. <laughs> we found that one. Once was lost and now it's found. Yeah, and then, then we had um, the actual what was what was it with top five post apocalyptic movies. apocalyptic movies. So yeah. yeah, that was not too long ago, which was actually weird timing because it came yeah. out <laughs> the week before the coronavirus really took over. Yeah. So it's kind of fucked up. So it's perfect Let's just timing. Say we predicted that. We also predicted that everything would go to digital media. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. There is a lot of things that we probably are Simpsonizing. The world's yes. gonna end next year. <laughs> What? Uh, I'm just no. <laughs> you know that the my, whoever made that calendar was just dyslexic, so it's, right, it'll be 20, yeah, 2021. <laughs> oh, there you that go. That was the Mayans, now. right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, fuck, I fucked up a number. Ah, oh, well. I'd already chiseled it in the stone. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I can't erase this shit. And it's like, what do you want me to do, Bob? I don't know. Fuck. Just leave it. Just I like that there was a Mayan named Bob. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, this is Maya and Bob. Maya and Jeff. <laughs> They like to call him Hefe, I'm Aztec you know? Bob. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well, I have shit. to kill you now. There, there's like <laughs> eight of us in the whole place. Oh, we could have done Apocalypto. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's a pretty good movie right there. But, but it is a kind it of a piece. It's not one of my favorites. It's one of their favorites. It's, it's not a good one of my movie. Favorites. If you don't mind movie. the subtitles, I love it. Oh, yeah. I don't mind subtitles. The blood and yeah. gore no, is my no. favorite. Well, speaking of movies, this week we I are heard actually, we're going to be doing a movie. We're talking about one of the funniest movies of all time. I think um, eh. is my personal opinion. I, I I watched this in a movie theater by myself the week that it came out. I and also I saw the, this in the theater. I was Not the by only myself. one, and I was laughing so hard I was crying the whole time. And and ever since then, I loved it because right after that, I'm I left. Um, in 97, after I graduated to go stay with my mom for like two months, right? And it was on HBO. 
every day, about three times a day, and I watch it every single fucking day, like over and over and over again. I love like that Like me movie. with Rocky Four and Over yes. the Top. <laughs> yes. See, right there. <laughs> and this movie is The Cable Guy. Yeah. The Cable Guy with Jim Carrey. I think one of his finest, finest performances, one of the best overall scripts, one of the best everything. Well, Are, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Because you were the only person in the theater, let's talk about how this movie was received. Womp, womp, <laughs> but... It, now, it did make money. It did it, make it, a lot. It, it did very well. Yeah. Not very well, but it no. didn't do as well as they thought it would for having Jim Carrey right. driving it. Yeah, right. and yeah. he got paid $20 million. Yeah, for that, that was the big deal Ooh, at the huge. time. Yeah. 1996, $20 million to make this movie. And it was such a departure because he was already filming, when he got the offer, he was filming Ace Ventura when Nature Two, Calls. Yeah, yeah. So he was in the top of his game right there, but right. everybody thought that he like was going to tank it after this. But yet it was such a dark, awesome... And I, I think that's why, is because it was a really dark departure for him. Yes. At that oh, time, you know. He wow. owned that, though. Yeah, he, really he did. did. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it grossed almost $20 million. It was $19 million, $806, $226, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 60 in North America and 42 outside the United States. So $100 million. Um, and it, it only cost $47 million to make. Right, right. So it definitely made its money back. Yes. And then some. It was successful as far as financially. It just wasn't as much as the studio thought it should be. I, I was yeah. reading something that another studio was basically putting out the false press, that it was a box office bomb, shit like that. Right. So they were kind of influencing everybody on it but again as an overall movie it's one of the funniest movies and i and i don't forget about it because i've watched it so many times probably 200 300 times i have no idea at this point because it's been out since 96 sure. so and then whenever it first came out on dvd it was one of the first release uh, dvds you know not in the first wave but you know in the first couple of years so it had one of those really shitty like um, menus and everything yeah. like that this one needs a really big awesome update to have everything well they did put out a blu-ray at one time did they? Yeah, with a commentary with Judd Apatow and uh, somebody else. I don't remember who else was in that. Uh, probably that Ben Stiller. Been, it might have been Stiller. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, um, his little role is perfect. <laughs> well, well, let's talk about the uh, the personnel in this movie too. Sure. Um, I mean, there are so many big people in this. It, and that's that's the crazy part about it. There's actually so many people in this that you you've seen in all kinds of movies, and at that point too, we're doing a lot of different stuff like that too, um, or not stuff like that. They were doing their own thing. They were starting their own thing. Jack Black, you know, Matthew Broderick was still as big as he was, as far as like the the crew and stuff like that. Let me see here. What was um, the gentleman's name that wrote it? I don't have my computer. Um, I'm good. I don't, I don't need it. <laughs> wave it off. Wave well, it. Judd Apatow oh, is no, pretty the, much the, the, No, the original writer. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Um, line? Lane? Oh, I thought you were asking for line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> line? Line, line please. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic. Well, I'm looking, and I'm looking on the IMDB DB page, but I don't see any kind of writing credit. So uh, real quick, the, I mean, while you're looking, I'll just tell this quick story yeah, about yeah. The, the how this formed. He wrote this based on seeing a cable guy in a building late one night, and he's like, why is he out so late? Hmm. That's where this whole idea came from. Wow. That's pretty far down the rabbit hole. Well, that's how writing works, though, in my opinion, right? That's like you see like a little piece, and you're like, you just build off of it, whatever it might be. But he rewrote it like several times when they picked it up, and it just kept getting darker and darker and darker. And eventually, he lost those writing role to Judd Apatow and somebody else, I think, was working on it. But Judd was so pissed, dude. He was like super frustrated because they wouldn't give him any writing credits on it because he was the producer. And the way that that's all set up, the Writers Guild, if you have another credit on a movie, like the num the um, percentage of what you have to rewrite has to be incredibly high for you to get any writing credit on it. And it's something that really bothered him, like really bothered him. Um, and everybody's like, that movie's bombing. Why do you care? You right. know, and he's like, I, no. He goes, this was awesome. Every day was great making this movie. It was fun watching Jim Carrey hanging out with Ben Stiller, you know. It would have been a blast. He's like, yeah, yeah me, and, me and Ben would just like 
get to watch Jim Carrey do stuff off the cuff all the time, you know? Dude, you can tell too. Like I was discussing it when I'm watching it. I was saying how much fun it would be to film a movie with Jim Carrey. Like he just seems like he brings a presence to it, a, a, a forwardness, something that's just making it fun. Cause you can tell he is like, if you just saw him do that and he was just improving it, you're just laughing on the set. Like you can't not. Oh, absolutely, dude. Yeah. He's just you know? a fun person. Well, the guy that wrote it is Lou Holtz Jr. Lou Holtz Jr. That's yeah. who it was. Um, so he is credited as there the writer is. still. Yeah. Um, even though For the Ap- Writers Guild of America. Right. Yeah. So Apatow this actually. Right at the top. Well, I'm stupid. <laughs> You're good. Um, but Judd Apatow actually rewrote a ton of it. And I think yeah. Stiller worked on it with him. Mm-hmm. Um well, it was a novelization too. Right, they turned it into a book. Um, it's a little bit darker. The original ideas, yeah, have evolved the whole time that they were making it, which was pretty fucking cool. You know, I mean, you could really tell that they. I mean, this I think is another one of Ben Stiller's greatest hits too. You well, know, and they, he said that the whole time they were filming, they they would do a light version. And yeah. a dark version because they didn't know what they were going to be able to get through the studio. Yeah, oh, <laughs> so they filmed the scene though. twice. Yeah. yeah, so they could intertwine it in. Right, and it would. And if you had to, they could probably make it ambiguous. And you're like, what the fuck? And then they did make it pretty dark, but yeah. it was so fucking. Funny. And he even said oh. that they were surprised that they got as dark of an ending and all that as they they did. Yeah. So. I, I, I was thinking when watching this, how amazing this is at being really creepy and dark, mm-hmm. but also funny. It's one of the only mm-hmm. movies that I can think of that does comedy and horror like oh, I really think well a lot. together. I think there's a lot, like Shaun of the Dead. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's a lot but, of that dark, that black humor, I think they call it, you know? To be honest, in Shaun of the Dead, I wasn't, like, scared. Right, right, you know? right. Like, not even scared or, like, I wasn't, like, super creeped out. It was more or less, like, thriller. Like more, like I don't know how to explain Wait, it. Like, like the video suspense? thriller by Michael Jackson. Yes. Okay, because that's what went on in my head. That's oh, why I laughed. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Fucking scary. I don't know why, but I just feel that way about but, that. But no, yeah. but you know what I mean. There's lots of movies that uh, kind of walk that comedy line. Oh, yeah. Those are two things that that evoke emotion in the same way. Hmm, true. Yeah, and yeah, and I don't want to use that, that trope, smart comedy, but this one really was. It was. It was well done. Wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well done all the way through in in the way that they. The pacing was correct. The filming was correct. The colors were correct. Because you notice they um, they use the same gray and dark blue colors and kind of overcast. And they and I mean, there's just and we'll talk about his wardrobe and everything. Sure. But there's just so many things that they used in it to make it darker. And it just it was a dark overall tone for the movie, yeah. which was really cool. Well, I think that the pitch, the elevator pitch, was basically like this is a guy who is smart with technology that takes over a guy's life. Yeah. Before, yeah. You know? I mean, before the internet was really big, right. too. You know? I mean, oh, yeah, 96. Awesome. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, well, let's get into more to the crew. Of course, uh, Ben Stiller was a director for it. He's directed a lot of good stuff. In the late 90s, he did a lot of really awesome, funny movies. Yeah. And then you really, I think the culmination, it really comes from Ben Stiller being a very good actor um, when it comes to the comedy stuff, but then also like Justin Thoreau being his writer for a lot of the stuff, like Tropic right. Thunder and Zoolander and all that shit like that, you know? I mean, you have good writers like Judd Apatow coming in and doing something like this. And uh, of course, it was originally for uh, uh, Chris Farley. Yes. But somehow he had like a two picture deal. Yeah, it was a they, scheduling deal. And they thought they were going to do another Tommy Boy. And then no. And then Jim Carrey was like, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. And fucking that's. That's fucking fate right there. Right. I think this. this yeah, I don't be, think Chris Farley. This would be a whole different movie if Chris yeah, Farley was. Yeah, it would have been the comedic side, yeah. not really dark. And, and it you couldn't have, been, have taken the dark as seriously. No. 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 Yeah. yeah. It would have been another, you know, hour and a half of Fatty Falls Down. Right. You know what I mean? Butt cracks and shit like that. But it still would have been funny. Oh, it would have been funny because it's it Chris Farley. Totally but, different movie though. Yeah, it absolutely. would not have gone this way. Um, let's see. Uh, so as far as like producing, Judd Apatow. Uh, he was really one of the biggest ones on there. The music was done by John Ottoman, cinematography by Robert Brinkman. Um, I like the cinematography in this movie. Yeah. And I think the colors and everything that he used in it was actually pretty good because he did like Tenacious D, um, Encino Man. God, he did a lot of different, um, did a lot of comedy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you have, um, a way that you portray a film that makes you feel, a certain way, like a gloom or like a more 
monotone or something like that. That's the whole point. So I think like by doing that, if you didn't notice it, it's perfect. Right. Mm-hmm. But you feel it because it's that like ominous kind of darker in some areas. Yeah. You know? And it's not so harsh like a lot of films too with the blue filter light. Yeah. So when you're watching it, you can really watch it more times than one in a row if you wanted to and not really be like, and this is stupid to say, but I fatigued. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Because yeah. it is a darker tone for everything. So you really kind of like jump into it. Right. I think it's more inviting with those those dark tones. Yeah. Some of the movies have really light tones and it just fucking murders you. Like when like, they do a wipe and shit like that, and you're like, "Oh goddamn, I can't fucking see." Yeah, you know, it's like, "Oh shit, I should turn on the lights or something." Um, this one, <laughs> this one really did have like a, a really really cool tone to it, and you know, with the with the camera Corona. angles and everything that they actually had, it was pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, art direction was done by Jeff Knipp. <laughs> oh, knip. Oh, I'm knip. <laughs> A little um, knipper. <laughs> but let's let's get in. Let's get into the the because I you know what I think is another great part about this movie is the inner integration of the music. Right. It had the mm. regular or- orchestral stuff, things like that, but in also the way that they melded some songs yes. into certain parts were fucking great. And you if after repeated watchings you look at it and you're like, "Holy shit, he's mimicking the song." And, and real quick, while we're on the music side of it, this soundtrack was the first time Jerry Cantrell ever did anything solo. Yep. Um, and it, it that was a great ass song too. Yeah, and it yeah. sounded it's you could tell it was very Alice in Chains. Yeah. You know? <laughs> But, it's Jerry Cantrell. Yeah, exactly. So, but it yeah. was cool. Yeah. Pretty good soundtrack that was not very well received. No, no, because Jim Carrey was actually on the video for that, too. Yeah, yeah, for so, the Jerry Cantrell. Yeah, yeah, they so actually Cantrell made song, a yeah. special video for it. Yeah, you said that name, and I was like, uh, and then you said Allison Chains. I was like, there we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into that cast for it. I mean, it's Jim Carrey, Matthew Broderick. Broderick. He's Stephen M. Kovacs. Um, the cable guy doesn't have a name. He just, no. he's well, got many names. Yes. But yeah. Chip Douglas. Yeah, Chip Douglas. <laughs> Uh, Leslie Mann is Robin Harris. Uh, Jack Black, another one of his kind of very early, early roles. roles. You can sure. definitely tell. Yeah, and he's funny. I mean, you, you always watch him in those scenes. He's pretty good. Um, but he's not over the top like he was in School of Rock or something like that. No, you know back I mean? in the day. He that was played, before he played himself. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. He played more of like the jerk jock. Not even jock, but like more of a jerky kind of like, I'm that buddy that's going to make that joke, but it's kind of too personal, but it's <laughs> kind of said so jokey. Jokingly, that I can't take it personal. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. yeah, but he plays that a lot more when he's young, and then as he gets older, he gets more of that happy, more goofy kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. yeah, he has to kind of you know wiggle around on the floor type. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, in this, he was more of a he was more of a character. Which he was, was more cool. of a straight person, straight yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Know? he was the straight guy that was like, wait a minute, something's up. Not in the way um, nowadays would be taken. But yeah, yeah. yeah, correct, in, correct. In the form of comedy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> George Seagal, Seagal um, from uh, what was it? Uh, he even Seagal's God. loins. Yeah, no. <laughs> he's been on a lot of stuff. He was actually, he's actually on, um, what is that television show, The Goldbergs now? Um, he's been on tons of different things. Um, he's the old guy. Um, of course, Ben Stiller, Diane Baker was Steven's mom. Uh, Eric Roberts is actually... Eric Roberts? Uh, Eric Roberts. No. Sammy, no. Sammy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Janine Garofalo's in it. Yes. Andy Dick is in it. Yes. The two cameos that I love the most out of this movie are David Cross and Bob Odenkirk. Bob and Odenkirk, yeah. I saw him. They or... only have like two yeah. lines, and like David Cross's line is like, huh, Oklahoma. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, he's always the dude that's laughing and shit, right? And then Bob's line is like, how could you do this, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After he knocks his brother in. <laughs> And you're like, oh my god, because they were on the Ben Stiller show, right? You know, a lot of those people were Andy Dick, I uh, even Janine Garofalo. Yeah. So it was a really cool to see that. I think even Owen Wilson is is got that part in it. Yeah. I love Owen Wilson. Oh, man, that was fucking. He awesome. plays such a great dick. Yeah, oh, I know. He he's just an asshole. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he Amy the Jack Stiller. Black route. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He Sweet reminds up. me of Craig Kilborn from old school. <laughs> yes. You know? Yeah. He's the asshole in that movie. Yes. Uh, there's just, yeah, there's just tons of stuff. There's a lot of cameos. I think, um, I thought one of the, uh, Murray brothers was in it too, but I'm mistaken. Uh, yo, no, Joel Murray is in this. He was one of the basketball players. Okay. Um, and shit, Kathy Griffin's in it. Yeah. She's his mom. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. 
There's just so many people that are in this just movie. Just little bit parts. Yeah, just for nothing. For two and I seconds. had forgot Janine Garofalo was in it until like watching yeah. it again recently, and I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Welcome to Medieval Times. She looks so young, dude. <laughs> I will be the serving wench, Melinda. Personally, she p- <laughs> I portrays. I love that. Might I fetch you something from the barkeep? <laughs> <laughs> no, like she portrays the perfect customer service person yes. if they could be truthful. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I got a lot of tables. <laughs> like Come on, man. <laughs> I actually said that at Medieval Times, too, the whole uh, thing. Yeah, I remember you told me that. <laughs> yes. You had a little, little much to drink that night. Fucking, that was awesome. That was like, <laughs> going to Medieval Times because of this movie, I was like, oh my God. Whenever they were like, stand up and cheer for your section's night, I was like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Where is that place? The Red Knight sucks the big Florida. one. <laughs> nice. Florida? And Florida has one. Ah. Yeah, well, yeah. There's fucking, a few of them, right? Yeah, there's, there, yeah. there's Ohio. Ohio. I went to Dallas in, in that Dallas. one. It was fucking great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I will always remember that night. Because I even told the, the woman came by and I said the whole fucking phrase to her and she just started laughing and i was like double crown of coke please <laughs> we were i think i was at least 10 deep in those 10 sheets to the wind yeah oh my yeah. god like i was he I had was drying no on the line. no there was no sheets he was out of sheets i i kept i kept um almost jumping over the fence to go run at the horses oh my god i was fucked up <laughs> I imagine you there. yes i was fucked this up. is why they don't let people drink they should not let people drink at the medieval times. Yeah, yeah. yeah we went to I a feel bar like I'd first. be right if I was that far into the drinks. I would probably be like, "Yeah, let's do it." Yeah, um, Dude, I'll I take out the black black knight. You take out the red knight, <laughs> yeah. and then we'll duel. Well, <laughs> it was so bad that the the people that took us because we helped my friend's sister move uh-huh. and her boyfriend, which is now her husband, and he was like, "What do you guys want for helping us move?" And we were like, "Let's go to medieval times." That was the only nice. fucking thing we said because we were in that. Let's go to medieval times. So they bought tickets. It was like. 46 bucks or some shit what but they yeah exactly so they they made the mistake of taking us to a bar first <laughs> where Pre-game. where we had about four or five um double crown and cokes Ooh. then we went to medieval times and before we even went into it you have this bar area where right. they got the stables oh, shit. and shit like that right so i had about two or three more right peed like at least 30 times i don't know you broke, broke the, the seal, seal. you yeah, pretty much <laughs> oh, it, i think Pinch i broke punch. the seal as soon as we Yummy got lunch. there right then we get to our seat and then i think i had about three or four more wow and yeah and he was freaking out because he kept hearing me say i'm gonna jump over the fence i'm gonna fucking do it and they're like both of them were freaking out but i had the whole section laughing because i was having such a good time nice. it was bitching he might he might That's... actually do it right now guys yeah. <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> yeah i would have never done it I can't even imagine having that much whiskey. Oh. No, and I I can hold my weight, but that's that's a that's a lot of that's drinks, a lot. man. I woke up that night at like oh I don't know four thirty in the morning, and I was so fucking thirsty. Like I <laughs> like they had only in their new house they only had like a twelve pack of cokes, right, and right. no glasses. Oh god! So I drank like three fucking cokes in a row, just like oh, oh I like just I was. Fucking wasted. I would have just turned on the faucet. And been like, oh, <sighs> man, I almost did it too. I was just like, I gotta get someone to drink. Drink one Coke and then fill it up with water. There yeah, you go. yeah, there you go. I was, just, I was just chugging soda water. I don't I, know. I've been, I've been in that state. I would have just turned on the faucet. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they were right Cleaner, there. I was it's like, fast. Uh, uh, if you go back to your partying days, you can't just grab a Coke in the morning. No. You know, because ones are used for ashtrays oh. back in the yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. You ever have yeah. that? You know that feeling yeah. too, like, dude. When you, you take a drink, you and grab then something hits your lips, and you're like, oh. That is the worst fucking feeling in the world. the worst. Dude, or yeah, it you gets learn in your quick. mouth and you like, learn quick. <laughs> oh. yeah. It's like touching the stove. Yeah, you learn. Yeah, <laughs> or or you you don't, and then well, like yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> and right. court, as George Carlin would say, the kid that eats the most marbles doesn't make it to fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, now let's get into this movie. So, I mean, we've kind of gone over all the principal stuff, everything that yeah. we really need to. Why don't you throw us out a synopsis? Well, you know how it starts out. Um, Steven's basically uh, moving into his new apartment, which I think at this point, too, um, because he's Matthew Broderick. Yeah, Yeah. Matthew Broderick. So, I mean, really, they have that big kind of montage of all the things going on. Jerry Springer It was just somebody channel flipping. And it was him channel flipping, trying to find with the antenna. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's trying to basically get uh, somebody. His cable guy was supposed to be there. 
This is my theory on this right here, too. I think Jim Carrey, um, his character, the cable guy, was listening in on the phone calls. And he knows how the cable guy sucks and they're always fucking late. And he was listening to certain spots because he's been at that house before. Right. He knew. Yeah, he, he knew, knew the, the people house, that lived there before. everything like that. So when he knows a place, he'll go stake it out and hang out and have that little deal and intercept phone calls. So that's why he knows about Robin. That's why he knows about the cable guy not being there because he's on the phone and he's like, well, my cable guy was supposed to be here like an hour ago. Right. But he hasn't showed up. And then fucking that's when Jim Carrey's like, all right, I'm going to pick the most opportune times because he's casing the place. He's looking for somebody else to fuck with. You know, I, I caught that on the last time I he watched just it. just friend. Yeah, I was just like, oh, wait a minute. He and we're that. also assuming that you've seen this and already know what's going to happen. But a quick synopsis is pretty much that this guy moves in after a breakup. And he has this cable guy that becomes a little too friendly and shit goes south quick. Yes. So that's the synopsis. And now we'll just kind of break it down as well. Super but, stalker. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So you get the, you. I mean, Stephen, he, he finally gives up and he goes into the shower, you know, so he's washing his hair and that's when the cable guy shows oh, up. As they so. do. That's always yeah. when people show up. He's yep. like, don't leave. You know? <laughs> so I'm he goes, right here. Yeah, he's like, please. <laughs> I love it when he's walking away. He's like, oh, <laughs> look who decided to show. <laughs> yeah. You know, just he his lines. the tone oh. immediately. Yeah, immediately. His like yeah. creepy demeanor. I know. Oh. What is fucking awesome when he's like, man, <laughs> Maybe I should just leave. Jerk off. <laughs> like, holy crap. He's so intense right off the bat, man. <laughs> yes. So I'm just jerking your chain. And you, <laughs> you've always seen the like tamed version of him, of course, not like that dramatic. But <laughs> yes. You've always seen that in some industry where like your tire pops, you have to wait for the guy to come out and like replace it or whatever. So you're waiting and then you meet the guy and he is yeah. just like one off the normal path. And you you know it just by talking to him. But this is like an way exaggerated version of that right yeah. but he does it well enough where you almost relate because everybody's ran into a cable guy uh, somebody who is just a little off and really yeah, weird yeah. he spent a lot of time alone 100%. yeah i'm <laughs> trying to make friends <laughs> you stay in that van a little too long <laughs> you know? well, that's why they keep the job <laughs> yes exactly well, another indication that you know he's probably been to that place before because he's like huh um, this place looks completely different. He's like, the oh, old really? whatever yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's like, what What happened here? He's like, they had a lot of cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just subtlety in the jokes. And then he goes through the room and he kind of, he's like, show me where you like it. Oh, <laughs> and God. you can see if you look really close, you can see where the spot is where he's going to drill and everything, which is pretty cool. It's like, it's not a goof or anything, but you can see where he's at because he, he knows where the cable's at in the fucking room. Right. Mm-hmm. He's been there before, you know, and then they, they overdid the cable. So it, whenever he just starts talking to him and everything, and then Ben Stiller goes to take a shower, he right. comes back out and he's and he's watching the Stan Sweet trial thing. He said Ben Stiller, yeah, Ben Stiller, or oh, for the oh. trial, right, right, no. yeah, yeah, Matthew yeah, Matthew Broderick, yeah, yeah, goes Matthew to, Broderick, yeah. Goes to take a shower. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for correcting. No, me. no, I was like confused myself. I was like, wait, yeah. me too? I missed that. Well, that's when you—that's <laughs> like, when you see the first part of the Stan Sweet yeah. deal, you know. Yes. Um, and but he's arranging all the furniture for the picks and hum bars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I just read too, which I think this is a very valid theory, is that the cable guy actually was the one to kill the the dude's brother. <gasps> yeah. Oh. So if you think Maybe about it, arranged enough because Jeez. the boy, yeah, because he's into TV and they were on that show Double Trouble or right. whatnot, and then somehow that broke up, and he always loved that show because he was probably that age whenever it was going on. So he probably made friends with the dude, right, installing his cable, and then somehow fucking killed his out. brother. Yeah, killed the good one, right, and not the bad one. But then if you listen to the voice that's doing the call, they were Asian and uh-huh. there were these Asian guys. <laughs> yeah, that was- and, you know, <laughs> and Ben Stiller stone his glasses down and shit. That's Jim Carrey's voice. He's impersonating him. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Yes. So he's actually impersonating Stan Sweet. So we should probably explain for the listeners who maybe haven't seen this or haven't seen in a while what the Stan Sweet yeah. was going on. Basically, it was um, it was uh, two a brothers trial. that were, yeah, it was a trial like the OJ thing, right. you know, so everybody was enthralled with it. Everybody is. But it was basically two brothers who were on a very popular TV show. The TV show got canceled. One went the good path, the other went the bad path, and then one of the bad one is getting 
He's put on, on trial for killing his brother. Killing his brother. So that's when we see <laughs> fucking Jim Carrey say something like, uh, or the cable guy say something like, I hope they fry his ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's a theory, yeah. but it fucking totally makes sense. Remind sure. me of the spinoff movie that I thought of after this movie. And I was like, ooh. Okay. You know, and mm-hmm. all that. But I'll talk about it after because okay. it's spoilers <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, because right before, because he was talking, right before the cable guy showed up, he was talking to Jack Black at the television studio. Right. right. We can infer um, uh, he works at the TV place, so he's got some connections or something. He says, slip the guy $50. He'll give you free cable. So, again, if he was listening, right. he already knew that that was coming. So whenever um, he tells him, okay, <laughs> see you later, please fill out a comment card <laughs> <You know? laughs> when I am finished. <laughs> it comes straight to me. I just like to self-improve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> comes straight to me. <laughs> and then... He gives you, he's like, so I heard, and Matthew Broderick is such a fucking nerd. No. Like, there's no way that he would, that looks like him actually doing that, you yes. know? It's like, maybe if I gave you $50, you'd give me, he's like, oh, 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 oh. wait a minute. <laughs> he does that Let whole, me scare the shit out of you before <laughs> yeah. I give it to you. What you were asking for is a legal cable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is exactly what I'm asking for. <laughs> and then he says he'll juice him up. That was yeah, his line yeah. in that. I mean, everybody had to have a line back in the 90s, but that was his deal. You know, um, <laughs> just everything that he did in those first opening scenes, again, set the, the tone. He has the drill and he's like, better, do you have a ba- better um, come out in a bathing suit? And he's like, why? Because you'll be channel surfing in no time. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so cheesy. <laughs> But I mean, it fits the character. Exactly. Yes. Oh, well. yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean, that's that's kind of like the the basic. And he says, "Oh, w- maybe we should hang out sometime." <laughs> you know, while he's leaving, I was like, "Sure, that'll be okay." Just to get some dude away from you. Yeah. You know that happens all the time. And right. if you are a friendly person, that'll happen more than you think, and it'll be that scenario where you're like, "Oh, yeah, <laughs> of course, um, maybe, <laughs> yeah. you know? maybe I'll take you out to the satellite sometime." Yes. <laughs> Show you how this whole thing works. <laughs> I mean, technology. Get in a van with a stranger going to a place you've never uh, been to. To a remote place outside the city. Didn't his parents teach him anything? In the middle of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's weird because are they, they're in Seattle, aren't they? I have no I'm idea. I'm pretty sure they're in Seattle or something like that. Oh, that, that makes sense then. The Everybody's night, sleepless, yeah. so why not go out at night? <laughs> uh, I mean, hey, yeah. they did have that movie Dad too. Joke. That was the... yeah. yeah. So shut up. <laughs> so so Stephen's an architect, right? I guess that's what he is. Yes, he is an architect. And um, so they they basically go to um, there. That's whenever they're in the meeting, and his fucking the hair plugs, dude. Yeah, <laughs> oh, his boss. <laughs> yeah, his boss. He's all hair plugs. And then whenever he comes up, he's like, "It's not my ass on the line. It's your ass and my ass." The dude's a fucking dick. Total, total like total oh, okay. douche. Like yeah, the, plays it perfect. The the yeah. middle manager douche that you expect. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, oh. and his hair looks fucking horrible. Yes, everything. That's his sister. That's uh. Ben Stiller's sister is the uh, secretary oh, okay. for Stephen M. Kovacs. <laughs> Listen, sis, I'll get you in the biz, but you got to carry yourself once you're in there, all right? I was like, that's that's what is coaching. she, Joan Cusack? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I'm impersonating anybody, it's this, even my own mother. <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> but then he actually he's at home and he's and he's watching TV. You know, nothing. He didn't change anything from when Jim Carrey right. or the cable guy arranged it. So it's still sitting in the same spot. And then the Tony Robbins commercial comes on. Yes. Because <laughs> Ben Stiller's got a thing with Tony Robbins. I don't know what it is, but he's always had a thing with Tony Robbins or he's self-help people. Right. It's just like they're his muse somehow. <laughs> you know, they're in every show, right. movie, everything that he does somehow. And uh, he and he's about to pick up the phone and he's dialing the numbers and then he hears Chip outside or the cable guy. <laughs> so he's like, hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so who, who now we know. His name book. is Chip Douglas because yeah. he did say that. Because he does, he does say it. Yeah. yeah. No, he says it at the end of that. He, yeah. You want to know my name? You really want to know my, my name? name? <laughs> <laughs> Adam Sandler does that too with his movies, with his friends being in them. Yeah, you yeah. can see yeah. it's like oh yeah, such repetition. Oh, it's for so sure. Yeah. They only do it for vacations. <laughs> <laughs> Just film them doing what they do. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's all you got to do. I really uh, wanted to go to this island. Yeah, I'll sign that deal. Okay. <laughs> But they do go. They do go to. Um, what is it? 
the so, satellite, the broadcasting yeah, satellite. Yeah, they go to the satellite yeah. all by themselves, and he stands up there and he says his famous lines. But this is true, though. <clears throat> yeah, it, so like you said, this is uh, kind of on the cusp of when everything was, you know, the internet, you know? I so, mean, it just kind of Yeah, got that's what I'm saying. It's before a, a lot of things got created or and, and, figured out. And yeah, I was getting ready to say before it was like available to the masses. Right. You know, just... So yeah. here's your six hours well, for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, back then it was an AOL disc and you got to surf the internet for a little while. Right. You mean the AOL coasters? Yeah, oh, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Um, so he's, escape. Come on guys. <laughs> oh my so God. he stands on the dish and is, is his saying is the future is now soon. Every American home will integrate their television, phone and computer. <laughs> You'll be able to visit the Louvre on one channel or watch female mud wrestling on another. <laughs> I love that he chose that too. Yeah. <laughs> what a drastic difference. You could do your shopping at home or play Mortal Kombat with a friend in Vietnam. <laughs> and that was really mm-hmm. foreshadowing. Yeah. And and the thing about it, the way he wraps it up, yeah. I don't know where this came from. There's no end to the possibilities. It was a fucking commercial. Yeah. He was, was repeating a commercial from somewhere. But in he was I don't think it was a real commercial. Right. But right. the thing about it is is like he phrased it just like he was on TV. Well think about the this um th- and this is foreshadowing but when he takes somebody else out there he says the exact same <laughs> line maybe that's yes. the commercial that he built in his head for yeah it, you know right. what i mean you know and that's how he got all of his all those people out there to go see the dish and he would tell them that and they're like oh you're pretty smart right. yeah exactly yeah. and actually um win them over because yeah after that they actually they're laying on the the satellite dish and doesn't he say so um what happened with your your lisp or something like that and he's like what i don't have a lisp <laughs> yeah, no, <right? laughs> no, no 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 he says uh you know my brother yeah he's a, a speech he's, therapist he's a speech therapist yeah. and he goes what about it <laughs> <And he> turns <laughs> away <laughs> and he's like um Nothing. so the night's pretty nice <laughs> and he yeah, just like switches yeah. topic real yeah fun. and then he talks about you know um love is a steel kodiak work boot to the face <laughs> 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 a trip to the emergency room, bloodied and bashed. <laughs> it's a great know, analogy. I want to know if that was like a, an episode of like Mash or something like that, you know, and just see if that was from something. Like every, right. he's almost. Um, I, I said this at, at, when I was watching it. He's almost Joker like. You know, a little bit, mm-hmm. yeah. You don't know his past. He's kind of chaotic because you don't know what's real and what's fiction, or well, well what's and, real and what's fiction. And he goes yeah. extremes extremes as well you know and he flips on a dime exactly so joker like things the only difference is this it's pretty much if you gave joker the want for friends who said that's not what the joker wants maybe he just wants to hold batman's hand (laughs) actually it would make a lot more sense he just (laughs) wants a brother he wants a brother he wants a lover (laughs) whoa (laughs) Batman, it, he, it, pull out you my know, bat and protection. He does want. He does want a brother because he's telling his mom, um, "But I want a little brother to play with." Yeah, that's, that's right. why mommy's oh. going out to happy hour. Yeah, you just crossed over two things. Yeah, no, no, he's just bringing it back. Yeah. Bringing it back. Yeah. Yeah. Smooth transition, guy. <laughs> so smooth. Oh, even... here's the line: smooth Reality isn't of... father knows best anymore. It's a kick to the f- kick in the face on a Saturday night with a steel toe grip Kodiak work boot. Damn. A trip to the hospital. Hospital bloodied and bashed for reconstructive surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I like the list kicked in the last uh, second. <laughs> reconstructive surgery. Surgery. <laughs> reconstructive, they, though, perfectly fine to say. Yeah. Well, <laughs> then they're on their way back, you know. Um, <laughs> well, when he gets into the car, that yeah. line, he's like, oh. hey, I hope you're okay. I've had a couple of beers tonight. <laughs> That's my humor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're like, what part of that? Better though? buckle up. <laughs> I mean, what red flags do you need to run? <laughs> yeah. For real? Yeah, he's bored at home. He doesn't have his girlfriend. He's like, oh, yeah, fuck it. Because the coronavirus. Yeah, pretty much <laughs> yeah. at that yeah. point. Yeah. Right? Self isolation. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's when they get to that really creepy scene whenever he's like, uh, You really want to know my name? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and he looks at him, It's Chip. Chip Douglas. <laughs> and he just gives him that fucking Oof. evil uh, stare and everything. Right. He's like, Okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> I don't know whether to be super creeped out by him or feel bad for him. 
It's, it's a like bit a little of bit of both. Yeah. And I'm like, safely, I'd like for you to not do these things. Yeah. I will, I will feel bad for you from a social distance. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> well, I think Judd Apatow balances that line really well yes. with his writing. Yeah. Well, and then he does the, the whole uh, Springer's final thought. Right. <laughs> you know, to yeah. him. And he's like, huh, did you come up with that? He's like, no, it was Jerry Springer's final thought. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was on the satellite dish, you know. Oh, and the perfect part is, of course, he ends up actually using it. Of yes. course. Knowing that it's from Jerry yeah. Springer. The next day, he's like, uh, I, <laughs> I forgot what the whole thing was about now that I'm on the spot. <laughs> I could probably quote it, but. Uh, and 300 times, Brock. I know, Watched right? Watched it 300 times. Yeah. No, <laughs> More like three times. <laughs> 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 but yeah, and then he actually makes a day because uh, free or cable is the ultimate aphrodisiac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him you're watching a flick. Did you also notice the whole, like, like vibe that he switched on, which is like the nonchalant don't care. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's sure. what he told him, you know, and all that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so he does that so well and he does all of that. And then on a dime when they're, you know, later in the movie switches it back and you're like, what? You're like, what is going on right now? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, dude, he's, yeah. he's sitting there just laying it thick. Yeah, I know. And, and she's buying it totally. But she's yeah. like, well, you could just tell that she doesn't want to be with him. You know, she's yeah. so like brush. She's like, fucking fuck off. You know, we split up for a reason. <laughs> yeah. It seems like he was a real needy dude. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he asked her to marry him. Um, well, I, I think it's probably more than that. I, yeah. He just seems like the kind of guy that you have to like reassure all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Everything's cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. And Everything's then, just fine. It's okay. Honey. <laughs> well, this is when we get to the basketball scene. Because after that, he goes <laughs> to play basketball. Oh, my God. The basketball. <laughs> oh, this is another well-timed music Oh, well, man. time everything. Yeah. Hey, you guys play here too? <laughs> <laughs> Not like I was following you or anything. Yeah. Nah, See, that's I love the crazy. mouth guard. <laughs> yes. Oh god. What yes. you? What? Wait. I don't know if anybody's really noticed this either, but the clothing choice for him is always blue, dark no, blue, and he uses the same because he doesn't have a big wardrobe, so he wears the exact same colors. And some of his suits, except for the one for the karaoke jam, basically are the same. He'll like change shirts and it'll be a different part of his uniform. But even in his private life, like that shit, he picks those colors. You know, it's weird. It's a weird monochromatic kind of a, a blue grayish weird shit. Cause a he's got the conscious level of choice. Yeah. Kind of Cause he's got yeah. the blue, um, uh, like runner shorts, yeah. basketball oh. shorts, and he's got the blue everything. Yes. The blue uh, tank oh, top yeah. and the. <laughs> And Jack Black kills that scene too. I love yes, him. Yes. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Like Jack Black at that early stage is a, a weird mix of emotion because his acting is not a hundred percent like as locked in as it is now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the nice way because I can't say something bad about Jack. <laughs> I love him. Yeah, he's like, oh, how sweet. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's I listening. That, yeah, we right. made it on a routine cable in, in installation, and we just hit it off. I feel yeah. like I've known him my whole life. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> and that is pretty much exactly how he says that, eerily. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, we need a man. So then he's like, no, I'm on Steven's team. Right? <laughs> Not a chance. Dude. Hold on. I don't want to pull a hammy. <laughs> and that whole scene. Oh. And then later he does come back to yeah. do exactly that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. like, why was it so important? Yes, that's why. <laughs> well, the comedic timing on the running from back and forth on that, that's that's where like the editing and the, the choices <laughs> yes. that were made were perfect yeah, because right. it gets to that point where you're like, okay, how long is this? Okay, no, okay, then. Well, okay. he does the commercial at the very end of it too because I think that was a tagline for NBA back then. Let's get it on. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? Because he actually does walk. He's like, let's get it on. And I think it was from a commercial, too. I, I, re- like, I really do. I like Perhaps. how Brock's interpretation of him, the lisp changes from like a <laughs> yes. to a skeet. To- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, whenever they're playing basketball and he sucks so bad, <laughs> he sucks so horribly. Apparently, Jim Carrey couldn't dribble a basketball anyway. So he's Canadian, like in yeah. real life. You mean? The, like in real life, oh, and then they CGI'd okay. the ball in a lot of spots. No, really, way. no shit. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> I don't Back know. Then in ninety six, though. Yeah, I know. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, he had the two balls at the beginning, and he's trying to bounce them, you know. Right. And then, yeah, then he's like, check it, and he like grabs it. He's like, <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love that part. Yeah. Like, Come on, White Shadow. What do you got? 
Let's see what you got, White Shadow. Well, there's not many things that are aired on TV that would show a check. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I know. He's like, hmm. (laughs) And then just he's like, oh, prison rules, huh? And that's when the music starts at the right point. And that's where that scene gets nuts. And it's Hey Man, I Shot by Filter. It's just a perfect addition. You know, that song had been out for a couple of years, I think, at that point. I think it came out in 94. But uh, yeah, so they having that integrated at that point with the slow build up and everything like that, and he's like, "Feed me the rock, <laughs> I'm open." He finally oh gives God. it to him. He runs up Jack Black's back, you know. <laughs> and who would do that in real life? But it was hilarious. That was so funny. Yes. <laughs> when he's hanging on the so rim. unexpected too. <laughs> He's, he's just screaming and you just see him and he just lets go and he falls on his back into all that glass he's like, i love this game because <laughs> that's the line from a commercial too that's the mb that was another nba tagline too both of those were like nba things that he had to have seen on tv <laughs> well that's why I, like that's why i also say he didn't know about the check yes he yeah. learned everything from tv so yeah. he didn't see that he didn't learn <laughs> Yeah. Or movies or something like that. Right? Yeah. You know? He's out on something on cable. <laughs> he seems more like live television and TV show. Kind of yeah. like that's the theme that he's yeah. going with. Like he, the old. Yeah. He pretty much grew up before cable really hit. Yeah. And then he got the cable job. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he was already mentally unstable. Yeah. Oh, mentally goodness. divergent. If he went into a cable company to get a job, he's already mentally yeah. unstable. He wanted to work <laughs> in the entertainment industry. <laughs> I mean. Oh. <laughs> And Dan is sitting right across the table from you. With a totally different job than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, we. I mean, he, he busted deal. I was like, I guess our game's done. And he's like, thanks. Never made a slam dunk before. <laughs> thanks for the booth. Thanks for the booth. And what a dick <laughs> thing to say, man. Like, oh, and that's starting to show you his, like, ability to be, like, very bad. Yeah, but you think about it, he's, he's kind of distancing all of his old yeah. friends yeah. away. That's exactly what he's trying to do. I was to just going to say that. Yeah, to basically get him more one-on-one. Let me That's buy a you Heineken. That's a red flag right there. Oh, huge. Just saying. Well, Narcissistic. Not, not counting the 57 other ones well, before. Well, i But yes, that is like the next level. <laughs> the whole Heineken thing, too, has got to be a commercial. Oh, yeah. Let's change that. Let me buy you a Heineken. Right. I bet you that was a commercial, too. Somebody said <laughs> in movies and commercials and everything, there is... There is so much meticulous looking at every single part of the scene to make sure it's perfect. There is nothing that is on accident when it comes to marketing. Mm-hmm. Right. When it comes to Game of Thrones and Starbucks cups, that's yeah. different. Yeah, they're right. lazy. Right. Yeah, lazy. Yeah. <laughs> lazy or directing. Gandalf yes. wearing a wristwatch. See, you know what? what? He's a wizard. I'll give him a pass. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Which one was that? I'm gonna he lived so many again. lives, maybe. I'll he picked to, it I'll up from then. Up. I don't True. remember offhand. <laughs> we've, Mitch and I have talked about it in the past. Yes, we, I've, we've seen the photo. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. I have not. It, it, I didn't want to show you. You don't deserve to see this. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't notice, ignorance is bliss. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, after the basketball scene, I, don't, I can't even remember what it's... <laughs> well, they're at the house watching Sleepless in Seattle. Hey, yeah. So they, yeah. So they actually go. He, Robin's over for the day because she accepted. But the cable goes out. But the cable's out as soon as he turns it on. Yeah. He's like, he's like, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm a preferred customer. Before he even gets done dialing mm-hmm. the phone, you hear the boom, 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 boom. Yep. Freaky, man. <laughs> and, he's, and he's pissed because Steven was pissed at him. From earlier. Not even pissed, just not calling him back. Like, he left those yeah. messages, and yeah. he, he wasn't even mad at him. He was just more or less like, that's a little weird. I'm not going to call him back. You have 12 new messages. Like, I'm going to need <laughs> you to give me some space, please. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was just blow-drying my hair. thought you might have called. Yeah. <laughs> call me. Did that ever happen to you? <laughs> <laughs> call me. We'll talk about it. The person that asks the question in the voicemail. Yeah, the last right. one is like not not a not an oh, important one though. Oh, just like yeah, you know, does that ever happen to you? Either way, and they just move <laughs> on. And you're like, what? <laughs> I got to shower and do some stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no that that whole part where he's just like, huh? And then he's getting ready for the date, and she finally shows up, and then he's fucking no cable. So he calls him. He's outside and he's fucking pissed, and he's got the fucking cable in his yeah, hand. Yeah, he's got a cut cable on, <laughs> yeah, which like, is not necessary, really? and I love it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And just Matthew, use it for effect. Matthew Broderick doesn't even point that out right away. Like yeah. that's the first thing I'd be like, what? <laughs> what is this? Like what happened? You don't say. I like that he goes and like once they make the deal, you know that he'll go back out with him. Weird, whatever. Yeah. Um. 
and he goes over and like flips a switch. Yeah. In the wall. That's not how cable <laughs> no, works. That's not, not at all. Not at all. He's like, okay, all <laughs> better. <laughs> that was the weirdest. <laughs> <laughs> don't even kiss her that, that's what i want in my house for every <laughs> yeah. light switch is like the big ones that actually take some effort so it's like that movie cinematic like <laughs> like frankenstein <laughs> style yeah 100 percent. that'd be awesome coming up from the basement though the monsters will get you every time mm-hmm. yeah this is gonna take too long no i mean like i can i can figure my way in the dark hopefully We'll, we'll figure it out as we yeah. go. Yeah. Monsters, come on. But see what you, you got. Your arms will be working out a lot more, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. you know what? Yeah. I'll be strong. Yeah. These gangly little arms. No, either way, <laughs> moving on. Back to the movie. Well, <laughs> he <laughs> convinced Change his name to Michidiah Strongbottom. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, doing those squats. <laughs> well, he turns the cable back on because he convinces him that um, he's going to go out hang out with him yeah. the next yeah. night so he's like all right pick you up at eight and then he runs away that was pretty funny the way he ran like a little kid yeah. <laughs> a loud, just a loud footsteps pop, 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 pop. so then the next day um he picks him up and he's like keep your eyes closed he's like where are we and he's like only the finest restaurant in town red lobster <laughs> <laughs> and he opens it up it's medieval times is like, <laughs> <laughs> the way he does that rubber band sound is fucking awesome oh dude yeah, so this, they, the medieval time scene is, oh my God, this doesn't let you down the whole time. There's oh really no. no breaks in everything. I think maybe the Robin parts are the only ones that kind of stray it's away its from it. And break in a way that it's not taking away. It's still funny. It's just like <laughs> yeah. a diversion for a yeah. second. Yeah, and, and they have like a special spot because um, he hooks up all the nights with free cable. Right. Yeah. So he's got a special spot to eat, you know, um, at medieval. And that's when we see Janine Garofalo show up. <laughs> and she's been in a lot of things. Oh, um, 100%. We already talked about it a little yeah. bit, but I mean, it's funny seeing some of these actors being so young and then seeing them now where, you know, they still do some stuff, you know? Right. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> but yeah. Well, then he does uh, the uh, thus thus thou have a mug of ale for me and me mate, for he hath been pitched in battle for a fortnight and has a king's thirst for the frosty brew. Dost thou might have for thus. <laughs> It's like, dude, I got a lot of tables. <laughs> is that uh, is that close to you in any way, bro? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I'm quite impressed. <laughs> yes. I love that saying. <laughs> He's like, you didn't have you didn't have forks, but you had Pepsi, dude. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> dude, I got a lot of tables. <laughs> So they kind of get into it, and he's really into it. Jim oh, Carrey is no. fucking awesomely into it. Yeah, he's, he's, he, I mean, he's as into it as like Brock Smith would be if yes. he was there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Especially wow. if you get him drunk. Yes, yes. Yeah. very drunk. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. It's so, so um, Andy Dick's up there. He does the introductions, and they have the horses, and they're all fighting. And he's like, "Are you gonna see your skin?" <laughs> and he does that whole the whole silence of the Clarice. Lips. Silence. Yeah. Of Hello, Clarice. Good to see you again. But you can see Matthew Broderick laughing so hard in that scene if you look at him. Because that was all ad libbed. Yeah, I'm sure. It just came up on the spot and he put it on his face and that's why they only did it in one take. Because Matthew Broderick I bet you they couldn't get through a half of a scene without oh, fucking I mean, dying. It would be amazing. Yeah, I would love to see all the the cuts and all the weird shit that they did take oh, out. Absolutely. All yeah. the the bloopers or whatever just because you could see matthew broderick he's almost crying laughing <laughs> yeah and he's staring right at him he's like uh because he can't look at the camera could you imagine just hanging out with jim carrey for like a week straight back in the especially in the 90s yeah like, yeah he had a lot more energetic <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. energetic yeah. for sure she would be great weird word. she would be fucking fun that'd be yeah. crazy yeah and he's one of the first people to pop up when they're like blue team cheer and you see him pop up and then everybody <laughs> yes. else pop up which yeah. feeds into like he is just in it to win it on this <laughs> but then like he actually gets um the chance yeah. of a lifetime he's like the blue knight rules the red knight sucks the big one yeah. <laughs> Those lines, man. <laughs> Dude, every one of them. Oh, yeah. got to be from something, I it, swear. D- does he say something like, spite him? <laughs> or smite, smite him. him. Yeah, yeah. Smite, smite him. <laughs> I can't smite any harder. But then, they, yeah, then they get the chance to go out there, actually, on the deal. He's like, is I this the normal all. part of the show? He's like, no. I hooked him up with free cable. <laughs> but I give all the knights free cable. <laughs> they thought it'd be fun if we um, messed around for a little while. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, like, I get free cable and I don't have to work. Yeah, but, let's do this. Yeah, yeah but it's right? like yeah. it's like instantaneous that they're out there on the deal because of course they had to get ready. You know, right. they didn't grab them before. They just spot. I love his face whenever the spotlight hits him and Jim Carrey's face. He's like. <laughs> he just like stops dead and just stares like oh, surprise <laughs> while he's eating and everything oh my god it's fucking like the best like physical humor that he did in the movie oh and so it funny. only gets better yeah, oh yes. my god when they're out there fighting this is another oh part part where the music is perfect well this is right on <clears throat> or made by Jim Carrey <laughs> yeah the Star Trek yes I mean, it's like they played the music from Star Trek from that episode. <laughs> they had the same fight stance. <laughs> like, everything was yeah. the same. He's all, boom, bum, bum, bum. Hey, careful with that thing. Whoa. <laughs> well, that's Ben Stiller's yeah. a big Star Trek guy. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, what is his line? I can't I can't talk to you now, for you are my sworn, sworn enemy. enemy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk to you right now, for you are my sworn enemy. <laughs> And then they get into that, that and, it's and it's supposed to be like they're messing around, but he's like going crazy. Yeah, I know he's out for blood. <laughs> so the thing with Jim Carrey and his character, this is like if you're first watching it, you already know he's kind of insane or crazy, at least in some way. Yes. This is the pinnacle point where I kind of came to the realization of he has that imagination. They already kind of preludes with the mom at this point, I believe. And so you know that that was his childhood and he didn't have anything other than his imagination. His imagination was made by the television because that was his input. With that said, he, he, his, his suffering comes from being able to distort the line between his imagination and reality. And it's like his imagination is bleeding into reality. Yeah. And he's truly believing that he is this person at that time. Right. (laughs) But then the chaotic part of it is how fast he can just switch in and out of it just yeah. from one to the other boom, yeah boom. he's he's definitely got some issues you know <laughs> and i'm thinking of that thing where he thinks it's real in that moment it is so unstable which makes you feel un unstable like un, uh, uncomfortable. uncomfortable yeah, yeah. Exactly. unsure of what's gonna happen next. exactly yeah it's always a surprise it feels uh, like yeah <laughs> and i mean it's it's way extreme in this movie of yeah. course well yeah. the, the whole fight scene is way extreme mm-hmm. He's like, necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like clapping and he has them bring over the fucking, the other deal. Um, and he does the, the whole trick the with giant the giant axe thing. Yeah. yeah. He does the whole trick with it and he looks over and he's like, <laughs> like he didn't even know he could do it, but he did it, you know? And I mean, and, and uh, Broderick's like freaking out because he's like, this isn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I would be freaking out. That would be terrifying. Yes. <laughs> and when he does the, I mean, because he he rakes the sand in his face, and that's a, a musical part that's awesome. Because mm-hmm. he's he's yelling, "I'm blinded," and then the song saying, "I'm blind," right at yep. the right time, and he's screaming and everything like that. So, Daddy wants to play rough. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they, they get into that whole scene, and he find, and he knocks him down. First, he cuts his shirt. I, why are they using fucking real like, blades like real that? Real blades yeah. in medieval times, anyway. Uh, like that is not in the transcript and no, working there at all. No, not at all. And then he knocks him on his ass, and he's that's when he's boom, 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 <laughs> boom, boom. boom. <laughs> They have the whole fucking just soundtrack behind him. Uh, and he's like, get on the freaking horse, dude. I don't think he's kidding. <laughs> Seriously, man. <laughs> Keep eating. No one's trying Keep to eating. help. <laughs> dude, people don't know how to react when somebody is that unstable. They're just like, okay, just hop on and just do whatever he says, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like, how did he know how to it's do like all this stuff, too? Being held hostage constantly <laughs> yes. by your cable guy. Yeah. <laughs> Because he was nice to him. He was actually right. nice to him. And it, for... <laughs> was just... Whenever they do it, he's like, this is your destiny. He's like, no, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. And he just knocks him down. <laughs> oh, my God. Whenever they're, he's sitting there and he's he turns it off and he's like laughing with him and then they're best friends afterwards right because they actually fought each other so maybe that was something that he learned from tv too is that you need to like fight with somebody or do something stupid with somebody and you become better friends or something i think it's like jumping out of a plane doing something that's high activity and it spikes an emotion makes a connection correct (laughs) so when you think about it any high activity like that you have a bond over this thing that you and no one else has a bond over right so first dates maybe not netflix and chill 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's whenever they're... Unless they, you want to. <laughs> did, didn't he have... <laughs> he does a back pop on him, and he's like, yeah. oh, yeah, oh, yeah. This nights get late all the time. <laughs> God. And then he's drinking the beer. He's like, hey, I think I left something in your living room a couple of days oh, ago. Man. And he, how are you saying will you, it? Will yeah. you go get it for me? Yeah. Like, you'll know what I left. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Makes sense. I, I've had to do something like that where I'm, I'm like leading to it, but the person is not getting yes, there. Yeah. And so you're like, nudge, yeah. nudge. He's like, just <laughs> open it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Open the refrigerator. It's been up there for three days how have you not seen the note <laughs> <laughs> my wife does it all the time yeah i'm like would you please do this for me she's like what oh no i don't i'll do it later i'm like no god damn it no you need <laughs> please <laughs> and then she's like oh oh then yeah and then, then, like, then well, i explain it later i was like you were supposed to do this this time so this was gonna lead to this and yeah. no i just build like, like oh, big blinking sweet. signs and things <laughs> yeah you yes. know, like lights and this <laughs> here, check. It's like, Ooh, okay. people are like they can't Ignore it. Yeah, it's nice. Right there. Yeah, <laughs> it's setting in front, like on a pedestal. Yes, in front of the with door with a spotlight on it. A spotlight, arrows that light up, pointing and to spikes it. behind yes. it, so you literally cannot pass. <laughs> like, yeah, literally. yeah. Really, I just you take out most of the flooring and put spikes straight up. So. I knew it. Yeah, that's why I got stabbed. Shh. Why do you even have that out still? She already has the present. It's just fun. Okay, fair okay. enough. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, you were laughing when I got stabbed. So. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and we digress. <laughs> back to the movie. It's so, back to the movie. That's, oh, we're doing a podcast? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, shit, where are you? <laughs> well, that's when he, he shows him, he's like, it looks like somebody has taken the liberty of, of updating your home entertainment system. <laughs> Deluxe karaoke machine. <laughs> Deluxe. <laughs> THX sound that will make George Lucas cream in his pants. Oh my God. I that line. loved that line. <laughs> I'm it's sorry. so fucking funny. <laughs> from, from an audio perspective, that sound system would make your ears bleed in all the wrong, wrong way. Ways. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh my God. And those are like guitar amplifier speakers pretty much. <laughs> mm-hmm. And those are not meant to be that close to. <laughs> Like, yeah, you see those at like big uh, auditorium stadiums, oh, all man. that kind of stuff stacked on top of each yeah. other and all that. That's but a PA system. That was like <laughs> not a big auditorium, yeah. though, but like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a PA system for a bar. A big <laughs> yeah, party. Yes. And it comes with the karaoke machine. Right. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it is. Just actually. take it to a bar. <laughs> actually, just turn the place into a bar. <laughs> yes. It, it's too much work moving all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Haven't you seen that that's episode of Family Guy? Just get rid of it. I don't think I have. Where he starts the bar in the basement? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, doesn't work out. Teased. doesn't work no. out. Because Lois is a good singer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets jealous. Yeah. <laughs> but this is not a podcast about Family Guy. No. <laughs> no, it isn't. But it's about the cable guy. The cable guy. So, <laughs> so he's basically are they related. They're related? Both their last names are Guy. guy. Holy crap. Hmm. Do they know Guy Fieri? <laughs> You just blew my mind. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, my God, Homer. Wait, no. Homer Simpson. And thanks for tuning in to the Drop Culture Podcast. (laughs) We are done now. (laughs) I'll digress. We'll we'll, uh, do the... This is uh, one messy motherfucker. (laughs) We'll do the after dark on that. Homer Simpson, Peter Griffin... Fred Flintstone. Guy Fieri. (laughs) All related to Guy Fieri. Anyways. Oh, my God. Maybe. Maybe. Dang. Okay. Don't go to the family reunion. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, what part of the movie are we at? Well, we're, we're basically Stevens refusing to take the the karaoke machine and everything like that. Oh yeah, yeah, I can't take it. Yeah, can't. yeah, and then he's basically like, "Well, we need to break the, we need to pop the cherry on this karaoke machine." I, I, I my guy with the party. truck, yeah, my guy with the truck uh, doesn't work until Friday or some shit. Yeah, like he's that, a so. couple days, right? Yeah, so basically, um, then they start having that actual fucking. Badass party with all the old people and everything. But, yeah, uh, well, so this performance is actually on that soundtrack as yeah. well. Um, yeah. oh. So of Jim Carrey doing, Don't you doing want some <laughs> doing some Grace Slick. Well, it's yeah. all it's all his preferred customers. Airplane. Yeah, 
which the preferred customers are like old people, people that the would police. naturally be nice, you know, and like nerdy dudes, at parties, the police, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody, like the soothing sounds of Raul, yeah, Across <laughs> like the you, soothing, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, foreshadowing. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's when Stephen gives him the uh, the actual Doctor Swears tape. Yeah, he's like, here, I thought you could use it. He's like, oh, it's Doctor Swears. <laughs> It's going to be the best karaoke jam ever. <laughs> and then he's hitting it off with the lady friends. <laughs> yes. And of course, he just meets this girl and um, the cable guy's trying to entice him. <laughs> Licorice, 12 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's all over you like a lampshade. <laughs> and of course, by the end of the night, he's like, no, 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 you should totally do yeah. this. He who had the taste masturbates. <laughs> yeah. And of course, they lead back to the room. They start, you know, getting hot and heavy and everything. <laughs> and then who else but the cable guy would bust in there and start with a crowd of phones. people, yeah, yeah too. Yeah. Blackmail shit right there. Because yeah. he's in the middle of his song. I would never do that in my history of my mm. life. No. Never do that. No. So, I'm just saying. Well, he, yeah. He <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like he did up. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? No, that's a jerk thing to do. Yeah. Just seeing the lie in your eyes, sir. <laughs> what? He, Girl knows nothing. You got a Polaroid? <laughs> Smell a lie like it's a gonna be a car. good one. <laughs> yeah. Like she said, a girl knows nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Jack yeah. Black's in this scene, too. And he's he like, thanks for coming to the party. I didn't know if you got my invite. No, <laughs> Steven invited me. And then he's, he's like, ah, fuck this, you know, because he takes a picture of him. And he's like, I'm on to you. <laughs> I'm going to find out what your deal is. And that just seems kind of out of the blue. Douglas. <laughs> and he says his name there. Yeah. But later then he says it and he's like, why is that so familiar? Oh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Like, wait. Yeah. He like figures it out because he's works in the mail pl- or not in the mail place. He works in the TV studio. So mail he's a cameraman. Yeah. So yeah, he's a mailman on the weekends. Yes. <laughs> in all <laughs> reality, the they should be best friends. They should. Yeah. Maybe they, they that was the, the answer. And then... Steven can go hang out with his girl. Yeah, see, there you go. There you go. They should have been friends. Just yeah. needed a little bit <laughs> of a Could have been a whole different movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, if he's spying on him and listening on him, he already knows this is his best friend, so he already kind of knew. Oh, yeah. He okay. knew the one person breaking. to separate him from sure. the most. Think about what you just asked. A movie of Jack Black and Jim Carrey together? Okay, I think we're on to something. Genius. <laughs> it would be genius. That would yeah. be awesome. <laughs> and I would just let <laughs> them write insane. it. That'd be insane. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. let them go on stage and do stuff. Uh, and then try and splice it into it a movie. <laughs> oh, my God. It'd be like Ultimate Cheech and Chong. Oh, my God. Uh, there you go. <laughs> oh, it's uh, <laughs> We put that out there in the ether. Somebody's going to make that it. That is now. for you. We, we've been predicting stuff. We were uh-huh. you know, predicting they get, people they, listening and then taking their ideas. But, hey. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole singing the song part is fucking great. Yeah, he does a great job. I, I Every time I watch that scene, I just crack up laughing. Cause I mean, cause the dude's doing the rock the boat, yeah. <laughs> rock the boat, baby, rock the boat. <laughs> the soothing sounds of Raul, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so he's all do one. Okay, I fought the law and the law won, and he gives him a little nose, a little nudge, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he 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 introduces the song perfectly. This is a little song by Jefferson Airplane. <laughs> I can't stop laughing because it's so funny because he's like uh, see li- that. <laughs> about, yeah, about their about their uh, their concert at Altamont. Yes. And that's the first time I ever heard about that because I oh. didn't really know that. So but whenever he goes into that song and it's the camera's like spinning around him and he's doing. <laughs> yeah, it was directed well. Yeah. That, that portion of it was directed well. And he's saying like, there's a baby born on the left side of the party, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Stay away from the scaffold. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many fucking good one-liners in that. And then he busts in, and then he gets him. The next scene that pops up is Ren and Stimpy on TV. Yes. <laughs> and he, he's making him scramby eggs. Yeah. And he's like, oh, um, oh, I had her checked out because uh, the woman uh, was apparently a prostitute. He's all, I bought this time, you buy next time. He's and like, he what? Is, <laughs> like, yeah, apple. And he's literally eating his eggs like really fast. Like he never eats at home. He probably all fast food, everything like that. Like so. how fucked up is that? To make a friend believe he actually, like, you know, had a connection with somebody and then, like, tell him it's a prostitute. I mean, like, who Especially would with ever... what he's going through. Like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Mitch, yeah. I don't know. I feel like there's a story behind this. Well, no, there's not. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> We're just moving on. Uh, no. 
To the east side. Yes. To a deluxe apartment in the sky. <laughs> but honestly, if, if you were to honestly think about how messed up that is, to like make somebody think he just slept with somebody at a party and then find out it was a paid prostitute. Yeah, like, that would suck. That's messed up. How right? does he still want to be friends with him at this point? It's a, it's a movie that doesn't really ever address that. He's trying <laughs> to keep him all to himself. It's only yeah. 100%. Yeah. Like no nothing else, and he's he's looking for ways to like corner him so he does not have to. He doesn't he have options, but up. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> so basically, yeah, it's like afterwards because she because right before they kind of set up the the whole scene of um, whenever um, he's talking to her on the phone right before the party, you know, and she's saying she's going to go on a date, and yeah. he's like, "Oh, time apart is good." But you didn't say time apart and dating. So he's kind of fucking mad and shit like that. So right. that's why he kind of does what he does at the party anyway. So he kicks him out. You know, he's like, she was clean, not a drip. Right. <laughs> oh. I had her checked out myself last week. <laughs> not a drip. <laughs> and then he kicks him out. And he's like, I made you scram the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and then so the the next scene is is like he's trying to make it up to him somehow because Robin's on her date. Yes. Rob's on the date with bit with uh what's his name? Owen uh, Wilson. Owen, Owen Wilson. Wilson. They're actually there. And look at his costume in that. It's blue pants. It's gray pants with a blue shirt. And he's got the big old fucking sunglasses on awesome and the mustache. mustache. Yes. I love the, that mustache. Has, has, <laughs> and, and I'm just gonna throw this out there. Has anyone ever thought about making him Luigi in a Mario movie? I don't know. Oh, they, he they would might work. need yeah. to do that. That would be perfect. Yeah. He would work totally. He could even do Waluigi. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Yeah. Because he would be better Waluigi. Sonic. Yeah. There you go. Actually, kind of perfect. He could I be know. Waluigi. That would be awesome. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like how um, Owen Wilson is a big dick in this, too. Oh, total oh, ass, God. dude. And he's like, he does so good, too. What's going on with the chicken, man? <laughs> and the eggs had a chance to hatch. <laughs> and she's just like sitting over across the table, like, huh. And he's just talking all about himself, you know. So you know, she's got a reservation. And he's like, well, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. That's I, I when... want to hear about your job. But yeah, I'm, yeah. So, I'm so interested <laughs> yeah. in what you have to say. But I'm going to be gone for a little bit. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll be back. Hey, man. And you can hear him yelling at the waiter. Yeah. <laughs> yes. what's, what's the deal with the chicken? I appreciated that so much. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever he meets him in there, um, he's like posing as the bathroom attendant. Which is weird, too, because how does the guy not know there's not a bathroom attendant? <laughs> the winters are remarkably mm. mild. <laughs> <laughs> he has that line, and then he kicks the fucking holy shit out of him. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, does. <laughs> cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> like, he just pops up behind him and then, like, fully bullies him like a high school kid. And then, uh, after that, then literally beats the fuck out of him. I, like, I wonder yeah. how much of that was ad lib, because I there's parts of it where, like, where he's putting the stuff on his head, and I'm yeah. like... I feel like he just started grabbing stuff yeah, and doing yeah. it. Because you can see it in Owen Wilson's face. Like, he's even kind of like... What is going yeah. on? <laughs> yeah, and he's, using, he's using commercials. He's yeah. using those things. But yeah, I remember he does give the 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 bathroom attendant a tip. Yeah. It's yeah. like... <laughs> it was 50 bucks, too, take a break, break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he gives it to him, and the dude walks out. Yeah. So then that's how he kind of infiltrates in there, kicks the shit out of him. He's like, ooh, it's handy. <laughs> oh. Straight into the turnbuckle. <laughs> and I mean, like... Yeah. Just that like, had to hurt. <laughs> that had to hurt Gene. Gene. <laughs> See? Yeah. He's getting everything from, from television. Going back to that unsettling feeling, that fight scene definitely did it. Oh, man. And then he just walks yeah. out, but like, he doesn't try and hide his face. And is he fucking... Superman? He's got that mustache. Dude. No, no, no. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Is he yeah. Superman? Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. glasses to Clark Kent. Well, he nobody knows what that. he looks like, anyways. Well, true. He's just yeah. a cable guy. Yeah, he's a stay away from Robin. She's taken. Yeah. <laughs> the way he's leaning in, mm-hmm. too. That was a weird camera angle. Oh. You know? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, it just scares the shit out of him. And then they have that clip where he's on TV, you know, and it's showing him come out of the. Uh, the deal on a whatever you call it a stretcher yeah a yeah. stretcher <laughs> one of those stretcher deals um, uh, yeah no it, I, what's really funny about that is because he shows up to her house the next day and uh, and he's trying to get in close with her so he can make it up and that's when he's in his ha- in her house and he sees the birthmark and he's kind of scooting through the fucking the dugs dings. yeah which yeah, is weird yeah, so he basically upgrades, upgrades the cable. Um, he How tells, does he still have a job from him. too? Yeah, or is it a job? He doesn't. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, he knows the research about her anyway because right. he knows what the address is because he knew it in the very first scene. Because he was uh, like, so your your name was attached to another um, residence before this. Um, what happened? Lady Trouble? <laughs> <laughs> so he actually knows the history. So somehow he's in the database for everything as far as like everywhere where there's cable operation. So he's probably doing this more than just to one person. Of course, he's done it to way more. Right. But somehow he must have probably stole a truck and had all the equipment and everything like that. I mean, he so. has everything needed. And if he was able to steal all of that stuff, that's amazing. And nobody's caught on to the, there's a rogue cable guy out there. Well, right. especially but nobody's telling. The biggest thing would be like the receivers. Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. Not now. Or not then. Not then, I guess. It was just a plug in straight in. It was just, you turn on the cable outside. So he literally. Not true. Well, everybody had cable. If you had the premium, any of the premium channels, you had to have a box. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So that was his, that was his way in though, because he really could, and nobody's going to tell on him for giving free cable. Yeah. Because they're like, we're getting cable for free. Why would we? (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. It's like uh, snitching on your drug dealer. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, he, he took my money and he ran. Why were you giving money to this guy? Uh, It was something completely unrelated. Yes. <laughs> and you fade into the bushes. <laughs> well, I'm, or get faded in the bushes. One of those. I Probably both. Remember. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. was the drug dealer. I, it was a long day. <laughs> well, well, after after basically he um, does the, the cable installation there. And then and he says it's from yeah, Matthew Broderick. Yeah. And he kind of takes the credit. But then he tells him, hey, I don't want to be friends anymore. <laughs> right. You know, and that crushes him. Yeah. He's like, oh, fuck. But that's whenever he's he's uh, he goes back to work, right? Um, and he's talking to the lawyer and all this stuff like that. Because I mean, um, before before because he goes into work and he's doing the whole presentation again, right. and then that's when the cops come in. Stephen M. Kovacs <laughs> receiving stolen property, and then that's the guy that was at his fucking karaoke jam yep. and everything, and they take him out. That's when Ben Stiller is there too, because uh, you. This is the kind of the beginning of the downfall of him because he does have the video as well right. that he took while they were having their date about the hair plugs and everything. He's like Mr. Magoo. He has no vision. <laughs> <laughs> and he plays it on all the computers like throughout his area. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, that's after he gets out of jail. Yeah, yeah. Because he goes to jail and he's in jail for the stolen property. And that's when he really tells his dad and then he talks to his lawyer and everything like that about that. Right. Um, and... <laughs> Whenever he gets fired, he fires him because the dude's like, get out. <laughs> so then he's he's fucked. Yeah. And then he goes over to his parents' house. Um, he takes Robin over to his parents' house to have dinner. And guess who was at the front door? Chip Douglas. Chip Douglas. <laughs> yeah, but they found out that his name is not Chip Douglas. But it's um, it's um he's basically Larry Tate. Yes. Larry Tate, but that's not the important thing. <laughs> he does a whole nipple on the window and everything like that. Right. <laughs> And it just freaks everybody out in the whole place. And he finally gets out, you know, and then he gets framed at work because everybody sees a video. And that's when, like, right, um, right. David Cross looks over and he's like, <laughs> you know, he does his little laugh. But then they're they're at the house and they kind of get together and they play Porno Password. Oh, God. Yeah, with his, fucking, with yeah. his Matthew Broderick's parents. <laughs> yeah. oh. I'm not saying that to my mother. <laughs> Dude, that would be so awkward. <laughs> oh, oh, but they're loving it because they love him because he's yeah. so funny. Right. You know what I mean? He's just, he's everywhere. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, he's the best. You know, he's so cool. Steven, yeah. Well, I think everybody's also had that friend in the friend group that you just don't really care for, but everybody else seems to like him. Yep. But he also acts differently around them than you. Like, I've had that once, and it's odd. Yeah. Very odd feeling. So I, I almost related to Matthew in that one, because I could I remember kind of just sitting there going, like, why do you guys like him? See him yeah. for his real colors. Well, you know? yeah. As soon as Robin passes him, he grabs him and, and tells him about the birthmark, and it's like... <laughs> He does he that, shows him the Polaroid the and everything like that. So he knows he's got all this stuff on him, so he can't say anything. Right, right. Uh, and uh, whenever they get to the porno password thing, that is a weird, weird Ugh. scene. It's so funny because he just doesn't want to do it. And they have it's it's a it's a popular version of the popular game show, <laughs> Password. The word is penis. <laughs> <laughs> and now he says it. it's just a bunch of like a child saying Apple. the word. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he almost like knows that it's like taboo to say. Yeah. He's but like, you're like, come on. No. 
I'm not going to say it. Yeah. And, and they have so much fun at it. They're all laughing and having yeah. a good time. And then finally he, he That's punches That's Bob Odenkirk, him. right? Yeah. 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 But he's, what's the matter with you, man? After he punches him and knocks him out. Yeah. And he's standing at the door and he kind of takes that Bob back like he's about to pass it. He's like, oh. Okay, well, he gets hit and he's <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, my neurologist won't feel the same way. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I think I can get over this and I can learn to forgive you, but my neurologist can't. <laughs> and then walks out and you're like, come on. <laughs> get out of here. Knows how to make a person feel like an asshole. <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. Like he knew, he knew what he was doing. He knew how to swab it on, and that's the crazy part is that he's crazy, but he's smart crazy when needed. Like yeah. when it's to conniving, plot. conniving. Yeah. He yeah. eggs it big time. Very like, sociopathy. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he wants he wants everybody to like him, so Stephen will like him too. It's like being really good with math, but not social skills. Yeah, you know, or, or something like that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Well, uh, math, not a friend of the show. <laughs> I like math. Well, what's I what's, do too. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I don't. It's Brock. Oh, that's right. It's me. It's oh, math. Jazzy I don't like math. math. I like math. Dude. Right on. <laughs> well, he talks well, to Jay. Use math. <laughs> we can figure out <laughs> three quarters of the people at this table <laughs> like math. <gasps> that's seventy-five percent. That oh, 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 there's four people. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> there's three people. Two. Yeah, math, not a friend. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many apples? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, so he's still basically trying to fight him, and they get away, and then he talks to Jack Black again. Right. Finally. And Jack Black's like, hey, man, I figured it out. And he names off all these names from TV people. Right. How many people have been fired from the cable company with all these different names? You know, there's been a list of complaints on these people, everything like that. So he's like, oh, shit. He starts to freak out, locks everything up. And um, I don't know. But it, I mean, he gets into that dream state. At this, this is point, also he? where the the whole movie from here till the end changes and pivots in the mood. It was gloomy. Now it's dark. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But it gets. <laughs> yeah. Well, whenever he's basically because I always thought he was in his van, but I did figure out that he was in his uh, he was in Robin's attic or the duct. Mm-hmm. Right there when the spider crawls across his face oh, right. and he doesn't fucking move at all. Right. And it's weird because wow. I thought he was in the his van. his van, but he's not. And he's like, this concludes our broadcast day. Yeah. <laughs> Click. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so he does. He does. He takes her and he doesn't really know. And that's whenever he has the fucked up dream. Right. Where he's a dun 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 dun. And he's running behind him. And I just want to hang out. Creepy. They did really well at making it so creepy. And that that's that song is probably from some TV show like Mod Squad or something. Something I'm sure. Uh, and it just, it, and it wakes him up and he's like, oh, um, and then basically he, uh, he gets another call, um, and he tells him that he's got Robin or going to hang out. So he knows where they're going. So they go up to the satellite, um, and then he gets there and then she's all tied up. Right. So like so, a fucking movie. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that I, the rain at that point was going pretty bad. I mean, it was raining pretty hard and he was on the satellite and he was te- he because he told robin the whole spiel too about the mortal Kombat, and, and that's everything. where it's like cookie cutter the yeah. exact same yeah. yeah yeah and then she gets captured he shows up and <laughs> like when he's going up the scaffolding and he's like nice jump spider man <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's got he's got the the stapler too because they get into a fucking knockdown drag out fight on the satellite dish because it's all full of water and he's oh, just yeah. kicking the crap out i of do him. like that he's firing the staples at him yeah. like from 30 yeah. yards away <laughs> I, or whatever I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I love the choice of staple gun <laughs> yes well I but just, he has it reversed too he's like dai, dai, dai. <laughs> and i love that he just attempts he's like anything at this point right. like it, it, right. if you're pulling the stapler out come Come on, you're getting desperate. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. well, well, when he punches him so hard, he's like, Steven, my lisp is gone. Well, now he has a lisp. <laughs> yeah. And then he fucking, and then he punches him back. He's like, you stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> That's like my favorite line because I've said it that way so many times. Yes. I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, it's just how I have to do it. Well, then he knocks the fuck out of him too. And he knocks him out. When he wakes up, there's no more rain. So that's whenever he's 
climbing up because he's on his way up too. So could you scooch over? <laughs> <laughs> he's got the stable gun, which makes no fucking sense. Nobody's going to ever be harmed by a stable gun. Um, but then he's got it up to well, his head at the very top. Yeah. I mean, well, you you got to be up close. Yeah, for yeah. It. It's not yeah. A, it's not a ranged weapon. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you shoot it across the room, if somebody's got their eyeball <laughs> open, or they got their mouth open and you're trying to make it in it and they've got to swallow it or something. The eye is a very sensitive area. <laughs> <laughs> ah, stapler in my eye and nicked it. <laughs> well, they it they itches. Well, they get up all the way to the top, and and there he's basically pleading for her to get released, which is fucking funny too because you see him actually have a breakdown. Um, uh, Larry Tate, Chip Douglas, the cable guy, he just Ricky has Ricardo. A, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he has a breakdown after that, and it's just literally like he he's. His brain snaps. Yeah, he doesn't know how to apologize, but he doesn't know how to make himself be something. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, he's just fucked up because of all of that, you know, because we know he was basically a latchkey kid, pretty much, you know, just like me. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And all he had was TV to watch, movies to watch, everything like that, because he just, he lived that whole life for everything on there. And then basically... uh, (laughs) He decides he's going to kill himself. And he's like, no, because he's got the staple gun up against her head. too. (laughs) And then she gets away. And then, I mean, then he basically takes a fall down. And that whole scene where he's kind of like, uh, (laughs) it's so it's it's so nice. And you see him falling because, I mean, Steven grabs him at one point. He's like, don't let go. He's like, don't you see? Somebody's got to kill the babysitter. Yep. (laughs) And And Black Widow totally stole that scene. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. And basically, it was just like, boom. But that, I mean, in the whole time, I mean, you're still trying to wonder what's happened in the Stan Sweet trial. Right. Because, I mean, we didn't really talk about Eric Roberts' portrayal as him. <laughs> kind of a little bit, you know, yeah. on the te- made-for-TV movie. Um, and so, whenever he he finally falls, the, everything kind of fades out. And yeah, they're, a, well, they're about to reveal... Like seconds from like, it, we're yeah. about to reveal the, you know, the sentence, verdict. the ver- yeah, the verdict for the Stan Sweets trial. Yeah. Like they're really, really building, and it's almost getting you there. there. You're yeah. almost there, and then crash. Yeah, <laughs> and it just takes out the crash entire the signal. Everything opens up. <laughs> And he could, and everybody's like, Tss. and then the only one person is Kyle Gass from yeah. Tenacious D. Yeah. He looks over and he sees a book and he's like, and it, <laughs> it was that whole adage, if you can affect one person, you right. change the world. Right. And he's like, huh. <laughs> a very funny comedic way of actually giving a subplot. You know, yes. Yes. I'm honestly yes. saying disconnect. We're yeah. getting too connected. And that was 96. Yeah. <laughs> Look at yeah. where it's gone yeah. since then. Steven's you know? dad was on the TV like, help help <laughs> and another thing that this um is kind of online with joker as well honestly is the fact that they just if this kid had help when he was young for mental whatever it is right he might have been so much better off or been able to actually stabilize this but because it was self-diagnosed or just never helped or anything like that he is this person that thinks suicide is the only way to fix him like that sucks. Not fix him, but fix everything. To else. Fix the situation. Yeah, because his mom because never he doesn't paid attention. feel like he can fix himself. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he had a couple strikes against him. He had his lisp, right? Yeah, and so obviously you're going to have some issues because of that. And then right. you have you're a non-attentive parent. And... Yeah, yeah, and you're going to get bullied. Non-attentive parent. So you're only. I mean, she says the babysitter is the TV when Kathy yeah. Griffin's talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know mm-hmm. what I mean. So yeah, <laughs> he had a lot babysitter. stacked against him to to come out of that. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Well, I mean, it sounds a lot like my childhood minus the lisp. Yeah, Yeah. 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 (laughs) mine too. I have a lot I could say on this topic. (laughs) It could go on forever. Yeah, Yeah, true. (laughs) Yeah, my childhood was a lot of imagination without TV, crayons. So it was a lot of mountains of like dirt, and I was like, "Oh my god, we're trekking up this two twigs," you know. (laughs) Come on, I was going to say, I was going to say, (laughs) every color in your color box just be brown. In different shades of brown? No. <laughs> did you have Palpatine white? We definitely still had white. <laughs> but did you have Palpatine white? We That wasn't out yet, and oh. that's also for sinners. So. Oh. True. <laughs> a little oh, my here. devil. <laughs> <laughs> We're like going to sell that one day. It's the 52 shades of brown. Oh, my God. <laughs> With that's... one light blue and one pink. 
<laughs> Pink's a, that's a little risque, sir. Pink is a little that's, risque. That's more Unless Mennonite. it's pastel yeah. pink. Yeah. yeah, pastel pink, pastel blue. And yeah, I feel yeah. like that's more, like you're right, that's more of a Mennonite. More thing. Mennonite. Very. <laughs> they're a little more, you know, rebellious. Yeah. yeah. They, they so. can drive cars as long as they're black. <laughs> See, that's unracist. <laughs> exactly. It's the opposite of racist. <laughs> that's anti-racist. Unracist. <laughs> I'm unracist. <laughs> no, overall, I really liked the movie. I've yeah. always liked this movie. I watched it now with a critical eye, which did make me actually see things differently, which is cool. I liked that aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that the the connections between the Joker, you know, with what you're saying with the mental side of things, makes a lot of sense. And again, I could get into a pretty deep pocket with this, but it is pretty apparent. And I appreciate that about this movie that you have someone who's so funny that does so many funny roles and don't get me wrong he's done some dark stuff too but you know he just this plays is really, it really the first well. dark thing though yeah oh yeah before like um oh god eternal sunshine of a spotless mind oh, was yeah. definitely after this yeah. what's the other one the truman show yeah it's yeah. a reverse truman show so yeah. a lot of people think that this was almost um not a ripoff, but inspired by a movie that was made in 1979. I don't remember the name of that movie, but the director of that movie is the guy who directed The Truman Show. So a weird little thing. Oh. An interesting little circle yeah. that we go on, got going on. Maybe Kai's a theory? A no, that's real. It just actually happened. <laughs> no, the theory of like oh, the more yeah, to it. Yeah, 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 there could be. Or it just happened, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what did you think of it, Dan? Uh, so I saw this in the theater when it first came out. Um, I've honestly seen it a handful of times, like four or five times in my life. Right. Um, I watched it twice for this. Um, and I will say that taking a more discerning eye towards direction, things like that, I, I appreciate it more. Um, it's not my favorite Jim Carrey vehicle. Um, not my favorite movie of his, no. No, and, and I, I like it like yeah. just fine. I, I laughed. I you know, I, I I thought it was good. You know, I'd I don't know, I'd probably give it like a three and a half megs of internet for nineteen ninety six. That's really fast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was blazing fast. Yeah. <laughs> that was like I was oh. just trying to find something to gauge it on, but I couldn't think of anything. That works. Yeah. That's about the max you can get from DSL, so well, yeah. yeah. That was ahead of its time in 96. Well, well there better be a max of five. Shit, I'm I had cable internet. I'm sure, that's then. what Brock's going to talk about. You had what? cable internet in 96? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no shit. Whoa. Not me. I had DSL. Like, I don't even know if it was really DSL. It was through the phone line, right? Well, because yeah. of my yeah. backwards heritage, I, I truly, like, I did not realize cable was even out at 96 for internet. No, no, my dad... Um, my dad worked at the very first computer store in town, and at that point, um, we switched because we lived in an apartment, and we switched over to the cable internet. And having that cable internet there was like fucking Blazing tremendous, fast. yeah. Because yeah. he was part of the very first people to actually get the internet in town. That's cool. So we always had like first dibs in town. That's super for awesome. Yeah. That came I remember out, the first time it. being on a T line. Do you remember that? Ugh. A T line. So basically, like your T1s. DSL at T1, yeah. yeah. Oh, your T1. your DSL at home was like, or even the phone line, whatever it was coming through, you know, was so slow. And you get on that T1 line, you're like, Ooh. oh, this is freaking blazing. Oh, man. I remember T1. Oh. I, I, I did that at a college, like when I was in high school. Like we went to this college and they had like blazing fast internet. and But it wasn't the internet internet. It was an intranet, intranet throughout the um, throughout campus. the campus. That's still and some awesome. girl walked across campus and brought me a snowball as a present, which was pretty cool. It melted when it got there. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say, yeah. <laughs> some flaws in that one. It's the yeah. first time I ever picked up a girl on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I I remember it. we had a computer in the corner of the living room. And it was just, it was one of my friend's vehicles to find uh, Jenny McCarthy's cooch. <laughs> I don't think he ever did, though. I don't, th I don't wow. think he ever did. Yeah. Wow. Literally, like, he looked for days and days and days and days. Jenny McCarthy of basketball fame? Yes. Wow. Yeah, he was oh. like, I know there's got to be one out there. And nothing. He mm -hmm. pulled up Bubkiss. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> That's but, uh, not what he was looking for, though. <laughs> uh, he found a lot of stuff. I bet you my dad was like, what the fuck is this on a goddamn computer? So he would wake up and, and, you know, my dad would get something to drink or something like that. 
um, to go before he went to work. And guess what? My friend was sitting there looking, <laughs> looking up there. He's ah, like, "Hey, Ron, how's it going?" Jimmy McCarthy. <laughs> yes, it's just weird. It's what, like, did she start doing? out on like Singled Out or one yeah. of those shows? Yeah, Singled Out. Yeah. Oh my God. On MTV and Chris Hardwick. 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 Yeah. Oh God. Only because of I know him as Nerdist. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, former. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, well, I mean, not him. He's not dead. <laughs> Former Nerdist. <laughs> yeah. The founder of Nerdist, really, right? He was the founder, but then, and then it became a mini headed beast, as it says in its literally yeah. without him. Yes. <laughs> it's like sucks. But, well, yeah. he got uh, Kevin Smith into doing podcast too, right? Maybe he was an influence. I don't I know. Think so. I didn't know. Yeah. 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 I don't know. But that's really cool. I love Chris Hardwick and um, the Me Too movement thing and everything. It got found out that he was cleared of everything. Yeah. But it was too late for his career because they just... He's doing just fine. Yeah, he'll, he'll I think fine. Chris Fardwick's going to be okay. Yeah. And his wife's really rich, too. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. He's, he got all that, he's got all got that NBC cushion. money, too, from uh, doing The Wall or whatever that TV show was he did for a while. Yeah. yeah the Wall. The Prime Time. Probably. If you're wow. Prime Time This anything. would be awesome if we were doing a Chris Hardwick podcast, but we're not. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> So, Brock, what do you think about The Cable Guy? <laughs> It's one of my favorite movies. Of all time. I, I couldn't tell. I, know. I didn't know. <laughs> I know. I know too much about it. I really think that it's, it is a 100% like everybody that grew up in the 70s and 80s um, that lived that life. You can liter- you can really look at it and um, see so many similarities in your own life oh, yeah. that it makes total sense. And then whenever I think that's where I think the most people grasp onto it at the very beginning where people like that and you can see the humor in it because mm-hmm. again, that was my, that was my upbringing in the eighties. My parents would be like, Hey, we're going to be gone. You know, and so it'd be, I remember the very first night I stayed up for 24 hours. That was awesome. Right. You know, we had Disney Channel and I was like, Oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Uh, <laughs> airplanes in my living room, you know. <laughs> and then whenever I saw this, you know, again by myself, um, it was kind of like one of those. It was, this is the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. This remind, you know? this reminded me a lot, not, not reminded me a lot, but reminded me of there was a series um, on HBO back in the day called uh, Dream On. Yep. And like all the his thoughts mm-hmm. were always like sections of a television show, you know, like different television show because that's what he did. He yeah. grew up grew up in front of the TV, yeah. and so all his thoughts were like little, um, just pieces of TV shows and movies and things. That first generation of kids who were growing up in the seventies, exactly, like that, writing movies and making things. It's just like Ben Stiller was. He was first time he was on TV. He was like what five years old yeah. or something like that. Well, so his I mean, parents are fairly yeah, yeah, everything all in there. So I don't know. It, I don't know. It resonates too much. And then now after the fact, I think it is, it's still looked at in a harsh light, but it should be, uh, I don't know, rejoiced Yeah, it's, in, a, in a way. You yeah, know? no, it, and I enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, absolutely. And I could see like how some people are terrified of clowns, you know? Some people um, are terrified of Jim Carrey's. Well, it, <laughs> people are terrified of clowns because they are unknown. You don't know what their actual emotion is because they're always putting on a happy face. You know, right, right. that's like part of the psychological of some. Well, the same could go for this. You know, right. it's kind of an unsettling feeling because he is so off that you almost like feel weird watching it. Cause I, I honestly could feel that when he oh, was like yeah. off, you feel just odd. uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so some people really don't like that feeling. And so I could see a lot of people not liking it just for that reason, but yeah. you have to mix that with the comedy and know that mm-hmm. it's part of it. And, it's a comedy first and foremost. Yes. And you just gotta like, let go. Yeah. This is yeah. a, yeah. Easily 50 to 75% better than dumb and dumber. Yeah. Oh, uh, I love dumb and dumber. Uh, yeah. Well, you guys can fuck off. I'm right. No, no, no. <laughs> no yeah, I, yeah, it's my favorite Jim Carrey movie. Okay. Um, I like all of them, but this one really kind of departed. And then whenever he did things after this, right. it was such a, a great breath of work that he had was so awesome. Right. You know, and, and to this day, he's still fucking fantastic. That new Agreed. show, Kidding, that he's on yeah. is a great show. I got to watch that. Oh mm-hmm. my God. It, yeah. I mean, we watched season one finally the other day because it's free on Hulu right now. And season two is out, but we can't get it because it's on Showtime. Well, since mm-hmm. we're all in quarantine, I got plenty of time. I know. <laughs> right? Yeah. It is a, it is a fantastic show. Very emotional, but funny. And he's still fucking Jim Carrey, you right. know, he's I, fucking Jim Carrey. Yeah. I know. Yeah. He's had so, so many so many things happen in his life in the last 20 years yeah. that's kind of brought him down but now his art is fantastic too i mean the guy 
Um, his, he's gone off the bandwagon a couple times where he went a little far more than oh, I yeah. feel comfortable, but overall for what he puts out for who he is, I love him. Have you seen yeah. his art? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh my God. He's like, he totally dove into it. He said it just kind of started on his table on the corner of his table and then it melted into these fucking giant 18 foot paintings and shit and you're like wow that's pretty cool where did that come from well dude you think about being a creative person period now you're giving millions of dollars and you don't have to worry about anything really because does he no no No. he's got plenty of money right yeah so now (laughs) you just do whatever he wants yeah and that's awesome, dude. I think that anyone sitting at this table would be the same yeah. way. You know Honing what? I'm going to paint something. Their yeah. hobbies or something. Yeah. You know? It we learn all kinds of stuff if I had the time, which right now yeah. we do. <laughs> yeah. We just don't. We can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. can online tutorials. You can watch <laughs> yeah. a YouTube video about yeah, it. Pretty much. <laughs> see? See? But the thing is with that, that's how you break your collarbone, though. <laughs> is you learn something online. Some things should not be learned over the internet. I learned how to paint and I broke my collarbone. <laughs> I learned my how clavicle. to do aerial silks and fell 20 feet. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be learning aerial silks anytime soon. No. Not something you learn online, friends. No, I can't imagine. <laughs> um, I mean, I did order the uh, stripper pole that you can just pop up anywhere so I could learn how to pole dance. No. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no, 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 no. I stopped there for a second. I was like, what? what? <laughs> Just don't do any flips. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. No. I like to put on bronzer yeah. and then wear my Speedo. Because oh, you know what? The pole turns. Not. Yeah, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. They get slick too after a while. <laughs> Especially if you're wearing enough bronzer. Oh, yeah. The bronzer. <laughs> you got to throw on the heels too. Some well, six inch heels, you know? I, I don't really wear heels, but that's okay. You got to own it. <laughs> Kiss boots. <laughs> Why's it got to be a female thing? <laughs> It just mm-hmm. makes it more fun. It makes it look more difficult if you oh, have high heels. That, that is true. That it's is not true. about a female thing. Oh, okay. Just okay. in general. I thought you were making pole dancers all female. Nah. No, that's good. I'm glad that you're open. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to be able to use any of this shit at the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean. Kept for the vault. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do we want to wait till Mitch gets back? Well, ja- Jasmine, mm-hmm. what, what would overall thoughts on the movie? Yeah. I... I think that I was expecting it to be, I'm sure like a lot of people were expecting more about, you know, Jim Carrey and how he has his humor set up because normally the movies aren't with him anyways. They don't usually have both. Right. Like Dumb and Dumber or right. I can't think of any other ones right now, like Ace Ventura. Right. Like it's just funny. That's him. Yeah. Like they don't have anything extra going on. This makes it a little bit more on the extreme realistic side. And again, with the mental illness aspect or the you know, abandonment issues, stuff like that really gets me. Gotcha. And I, I like that a lot, but it's just because I research that a lot, sure. you know, and I know a lot about it. So I think that for that reason, you know, having both things, it's really cool. Right on. Not something I would binge every single day, like Brock says, but <laughs> it's something I'd be cool with watching every few months or something like that. Yeah. Everybody yeah. always says that, like, and no disrespect, every few months watching a movie. Who the fuck has all this time? I mean, now, I guess, for the next few weeks. But I mean, <laughs> like, I'm, I am struggle just to give, to watch a new movie now or a new yeah. show. That's you know what thing. I mean? It's but easier to rotate back to something you've already seen. When I was a teenager, though. You but then you're not consuming anything new. Yeah, and I but... do watch, there's movies that I do watch, like, like I watch Harvey generally at once every couple of years. Um, oh. Because I love that movie. Every year. Dawn of the Dead every year. Sure. The Living Dead every year, Friday the 13th, 1 through 12. See, I don't do that. See, I, I yeah. can't do that everywhere. I'm mm-hmm. not going to put that kind of time in it. But even the movies that I love the mostest, yeah. I don't watch every year. I don't watch every two years. I, you know, Every few years, I'll be like, yeah, I'm going to watch that. The ones that I watch the most are the ones that I saw from zero to, like, say, 25. Right. After that, you know. Exactly. And exactly. not enough. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I, I again, I started being somewhat responsible at that point <laughs> but uh, 25 well, is about the year when yeah. men start becoming responsible by that I, I guess yeah that worked out for me yeah yeah, yeah i was fucking yeah <laughs> a dumbass oh well, you're gonna but, have uh, a kid okay yeah yeah. 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 yeah that's what i did i was like Ooh, uh-huh. run away <laughs> i'm a dick 
Um, oh, <laughs> that got real yeah. dark and deep. Sorry. But, Do you want to yeah. add anything about the movie? Yeah. I think you're the only one that maybe hasn't talked talked about it. No, I, I kind of wrapped it up. It's a movie that I've loved for a long time. It's a movie that I saw differently watching it for the podcast. And that's one of the coolest parts about doing a podcast. Agreed. Looking at something differently. Mm-hmm. Something that's been in your life for a long time, you know? And this was one of those. I liked it. Yeah. It's always going to be there. I think eventually, I mean, whenever they show Jim Carrey's Oscar nominated or his like, whatever you call it, Lifetime Achievement Award, Award, they'll have pictures of that and people will be rip roaring in the fucking stands. Oh, yeah. It's because they love it. You know, his Ace Ventura, when they're showing that Jim Carrey will not be missed. (laughs) (laughs) You know, his memorial video. Right. You know, 2046. (laughs) Jim Carrey's gone. (laughs) It's a long ways away, too. It is. Oh, hopefully. It is. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we're going to wrap it up. Why do I got a book notification? That's weird. So we're wrapping it up. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks again, guys, for tuning in to the Drop Culture Podcast. Uh, we always want to give a shout out to all of our friends out there, Not For Everyone podcast, everything that's going out there in the world. Um, listen. Encourage everybody else to listen to it. If you got a question or a comment, leave it. Again, my name is Brock. My name is Mitch. I'm Dan. I'm Jasmine. Friend of the show. (laughs) And we'll talk to you later. Have a dropped culture night. Boom. Pause.